Hello, beloved family. Okay, so I got some more exciting things to tie together. Um, and some other people uh, have uh, given witness to these next several days being high watch days. Um, and I just want to start by saying I know we're all weary of watching dates and having them come and go, myself included. Trust me. Uh, I was in prayer this afternoon and I just said to Father that I'm weary. I'm tired of looking at dates. I actually, you know, I was honest. I said, Father, I'm tired of looking at dates. They come and go and I don't want people to be discouraged and I don't want to be discouraged. I just want to encourage people and and I was, you know, distraught over it. And um, he has had already let me know before I went into prayer in my spirit. And he just confirmed it again once I prayed. And the understanding that he has given me is that when we watch dates on a calendar, they are there... The pri he, okay. The primary reason we are looking at dates is not so much to say the rapture could happen on this day, or um, you know something might happen on this day. It's to keep us watching. He has put that in my spirit that he gives us dates on a calendar to look at because it keeps us going. Now, of course, there are those who hate dates. The date haters <laughs> and um, you know us watchmen get called all kinds of nasty things because of that but it doesn't bother us because we keep going and um, for people who do get discouraged when a date comes and goes because trust me we all do we all want to go home we all want to be with our bridegroom and yes of course it's discouraging when a date comes and goes but it also for those of us who don't mind because we have the faith to keep going to keep marching forward whether a date comes and goes or not because our hope is in him and we trust in his promises so please pray for the people who get discouraged and want to give up and stop watching we understand that yes it can be difficult and disheartening but most of you that come here because I read all the comments and trust me I read every single one and I thank you for them because they are edifying and encouraging um, most of you who who come here and watch my channel another watchman's channel um, we we are encouraged by looking for a time frame because it gives us something to hope for. And the Father knows how we are in our humanness. And He knows that if He gives us something to be excited for, it's like setting your wedding date. I've said this before in, in other videos. You set your wedding date and then you have, up until the, that day comes, you are excited about your wedding day. And we don't know for sure when our wedding day is because it hasn't been told to us so we keep going forward with the next time frame and the next time frame hoping that could this be our wedding day so in the meantime we stay excited because we know that when a day comes and goes or we're that much closer and I left a comment to someone that you know our betrothment to our bridegroom is a Jewish tradition yes our Savior was a Jew in case anybody didn't know that <laughs> and the tradition was the bride and bridegroom became betrothed and then they wrote the ketubah which is the marriage contract which is what we have the covenant is a covenant it's an agreement and that's what he the Bible is our marriage contract that's the covenant he wrote saying I am betrothing you to myself 
if you accept him as your bridegroom. Then, once they are betrothed, they are legally married. They haven't gotten, they haven't had the wedding ceremony yet, but they are legally married. Then the bridegroom goes away for a year, sometimes more, to build an addition onto his father's house for him and his new bride to live in once they get married. And that ties into exactly what our Savior told us about, I go to prepare a place for you, there are many mansions in my father's house, and where I go you will be also, and I will come and bring you unto myself, into our heavenly mansion. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And um, that is tied to the Jewish wedding tradition. So while the bridegroom and bride were separated, the bridegroom would send her gifts to keep her encouraged while she waited for him to come unannounced to pick her up. Us watching, as we were commanded to do, and looking for these hints of our wedding day approaching, those are the gifts. The little pieces that he gives us here and there, he has made me understand it's not about could the rapture happen on this date? I mean, it is, but it's not. It is secondary, but primarily it is to keep us watching and to keep us going forward and to keep us encouraged. So, that's all I want to say about that because I'm already almost seven minutes in. Okay, um, so I was thinking about what it says in Haggai 2 where it refers to Tishri 21, which is the seventh day of Sukkot. Um, and for those of you who are new to the feast, Sukkot is the Feast of Tabernacles. And I would encourage you, if you are not familiar with the feast days, to study them. Because they're not Jewish feasts, they are our Father's feasts. And he even says so in the Word. And they all point to our Savior. They're all about Him. And they're all... Every single one of them are a potential wedding date, <laughs> um, a.k.a. rapture date. There's things in every single one of them that point to that. And he did it that way on purpose so that we would look at them and say, could this be it? Okay, that wasn't it. Let's go to the next one. We look at them. Could this be it? And like I said, it's to keep us encouraged because if he didn't give us something to look for, and by the way, the feast days all fall on a date, on a calendar so that's why we look at these dates um, other people look you know they plug in other dates that have nothing to do with the feast days and that's fine too but they're also I think the same thing they're to keep us going to keep us watching so um, he knows that if he didn't give us something to look forward to and to look at and to get excited about. I think if we didn't have any, if these feast days were not even in existence, which fall on that date, and all he said was, I'm coming for you, um, you know, I can't tell you when, but I'll be there sometime. You know, th think of, you know, girls especially. You women know what I'm talking about. If you're your boyfriend or your husband, says, um, let's go on a date at such and such, but y'all are going to meet somewhere for a date because maybe you're both coming from work or whatever. And he says, let's go see a movie Friday night. I'll meet you at the movie theater. And he doesn't tell you what time to be there, you know, what movie you're seeing. You, you don't know nothing. You just say, and he doesn't tell you what theater, what movie, what time. He just said, we're going to see him. I mean, how frustrating would that would, would that be? And because you don't, and then he doesn't call you, and so you, you're going to give up. And you're going to say, well, forget this. He didn't even tell me. I thought by now he would have told me a time or the place or something, and he hasn't told me anything, so forget it. I'm going home. I'm not even going to watch anymore. I'm not, I'm not even going to expect him anymore. That's what would happen if we didn't have dates. Okay, so I beat that to death. Okay, so back to this, Tishri 21. Um, so in Haggai 2, it mentions this, the 21st day of the seventh month, and um, 
so I started to think about it, and I have studied this many, many, many times before. Uh, started back in probably in August, probably, and I've studied them in previous years as well. But you know, we always study the feast days <laughs> intently right before they come, just you know, for potential time of departure. So um, either late August or early September, I was looking at this, and I made a bunch of videos about the Feast of Tabernacles and. Um, so I've already covered this in, in previous videos, but I'm going to tie a bunch of other things in together with some other people's videos. So, um, okay, so the, the seventh day of Sukkot, it's really, it's a seven day feast, but the eighth day is included, but the actual feast of Sukkot is only seven days from the 15th to the 21st. Then it's also known as the Feast of Booths because that's when the Jews will build temporary tabernacles to dwell in. And they are to dwell in them for, for seven days. And then on the eighth day, it's still part of the feast. It's like a tacked on extra day. But you do, you're not required to stay in your booth this day. You can go back home to your regular, you know, your regular house. Um, but they sleep in there. They eat in there for seven days. And then on this day, it's still part of because this would be the Sabbath this is a Sabbath and this is a Sabbath uh, but they are not required to stay in their booth so there's one clue this is the last day they stay in their temporary dwelling which is synonymous with our body our body is our tabernacle okay so we go on down um, the Hebrew name for the seventh day of Sukkot is Hoshana Rabbah and it means great salvation it's the climactic day on Roshana, uh, uh, sorry, Rosh Hashanah, which is the first day of Tishri, the seventh month. This is when judgment is rendered. It's written down. Then on Yom Kippur, the judgment is sealed. All those who, they're given time from here to here to repent. Well, actually, it starts um, the month before in Elul, a 40-day period of repentance which ends at Yom Kippur and so they have 40 days to to get right and then judgment is sealed here and then on the seventh day it is delivered so and that's going to tie into um, brother Aaron at uh, redeemed 44's channel that he uh, put up today and I'm going to put links to the videos that I'm going to mention okay so just remember judgment is delivered last day to stay in your temporary booth okay so um, there's a tradition that the Jews do where for the six days the first six days of Sukkot they they take the Torah out of the ark which is the cabinet that it's kept in and they circle it one time for each of these days and then on the seventh day they circle it seven times and this is a reenactment of um, what happened at Jericho before they besieged the city and took it down, which was led by Joshua. Um, in, in Hebrew, his name is Yahushua, which is Yeshua's name, Jesus' name in Hebrew. That's his name. And Joshua is a type and shadow of Yeshua. Um, I usually say Yeshua, and I think that how Yeshua came was... When people would say Yahushua, it just, they kind of, you know, when people hear translations of people saying certain things over time, they uh, kind of change slightly, you know, like, well, I don't want to go into other things, but, um, so I don't think it really matters how you pronounce it, as long as you, you know that Yeshua is his Hebrew name. That's Jesus' Hebrew name. Okay, so they, um... They will sing and they will say Hoshiana, which means save us, please. And this happened at the triumphal entry on Nissan 10. When Yeshua rode in on the donkey, the people were waving palm branches like they do at the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, they were singing Hosanna, which means that's the, the English Greek version of Hoshiana and 
they were basically saying the same thing. They were saying, save us, please. So the 10th day of Nisan is synonymous with the 21st day of um, Tishri. But the 21st day of Nisan is also synonymous with the 21st of Nisan because those two feasts, Passover unleavened bread, is a mirror image of uh, tabernacles. They begin on the same day, numbered day of the month, and end on the same numbered day of the month, 15th through the 21st, with the uh, Feast of Tabernacles having an extra day. Okay, um, so they circle, as I said, they um, uh, they stay up all night and read uh, the book of Deuteronomy and the entire book of Psalms. Um, this is to ensure that Torah has been read through before the beginning of Simchat Torah, which Simchat Torah is the 23rd day. This is the day when they start over again. So Shemini Yetzirah is the last eighth day. It's the, the very last day. And, um, but we're, we're talking about here. Actually, this would be the last day that they read Torah. And then this day, well, it depends. The Jews do it. They'll usually celebrate these two either separately or together. Um, but regardless of whether it's this day or this day, it's, um, they stop, they finish the por Torah portions, reading the Torah, and the Torah are the first five books, and the very first book after the Torah is Joshua. So, um, this ties to, like I said, um, Sorry, hang on, let me get that to pull up. To uh, when they circled Jericho, uh, because on the they did it for seven days. The first six days they only went around the city once. They marched around the city. The priests blew the trumpets. And um, on the seventh day, they circled it seven times. And then there was a shout... Hang on, let me find exactly. My computer's going a little slow because I have so many windows open. Um, they came to pass on the seventh day. They rose early about the dawning of the day, compass the city seven times. On that day, they compass it seven, seven times. Yeah. And it came past at the seventh time when the police priest blew with the trumpets and the priests here the holy spirit are telling me these are synonymous not saying that they were but there's synonymous with the angels blowing the trumpets and joshua yeshua said unto the people the people are, are the men of war these are his angels shout for the lord has given you the city and um rahab the harlot w was spared because she protected the two spies, which this is also going to take place during the tribulation. But um, for now, I wanted to point out, because it's tied to the seventh day of Sukkot. Okay, and um, what I found out, I had never looked this up before, but I said, well, let me look up Jericho. Since it's tied to Tishri 21, let's look up what Jericho means. We know it was the city that they besieged. Okay, so um, I clicked on Jericho and in the Strongs it is made up of two different words which I was like, whoa! Um, the first one is Yariach and the first one is Ruach. And I was like, what? Ruach? That's... Okay. Let's get into this because um, this points to tomorrow. Um, Yariak means moon. I had no idea. And it says it's month. Um, and, um, okay. So, Yariak means moon. And when you go down here, it says moon, month. Because the word month comes... Uh, from the word moon and usually 
in the word when it talks about moon, new moon, it means the beginning of the month, or it could just be the month in general. Um, but it's interesting because, <laughs> here, look over here, Joshua, the sun and the moon stopped. What were we talking about the other day about the sun standing still? Um, so, Yariach means moon, and then the other part of the word was Ruach. Okay, so, I'm sure many of you have heard the the phrase Ruach HaKodesh that is the Hebrew for Holy Spirit and Kodesh means holy and Ruach means the spirit of Yah and it means his breath in other words what he speaks so the Holy Spirit is whenever the Holy Spirit reveals anything to us and um, enlightens us that is what the father has spoken um, creation was brought into being by the Ruach HaKodesh because it's basically everything that the father spoke um, and continues to speak so I knew that it was um, his breath it it's his words is what he speaks but I did not know that it also means smell touch accept make a quick understanding and um, when it says s accept and smell that has to do with the sweet savor that goes up um, not only from the offerings on the altar because when they are burnt a sweet savoring smell goes up to the father and he smells the offerings when he smells the smell of an offering it pleases him it is a sweet savor when he um, smells uh, offerings to to idols and false gods it is um, what does he call it um, he doesn't like it basically it's a, a stench that's what it is and he and he says the stench has risen up in my nostrils in other words he, he is smelling what is coming from the earth as it goes up to the throne and then also the altar of incense where incense are burnt that is a sweet savoring smell because um, it's also an offering and um, it, it all ties to Yeshua and his sacrifice when he was crucified on the cross he became the burnt offering which is offered on the altar but because of who he was who he is he was the father's son giving his life for us and so the altar of incense represents him his essence coming up as a sweet savor because on the altar of incense they usually burn um, frankincense and myrrh and, and some other different um, uh, spices and ointments that are, are made into an incense and they all have to do with Yeshua and his scent and, and him his essence and so in this instance it has to do with um, accepting I'm, I'm paraphrasing here but accepting the smell of the offering that's on the altar and if you haven't figured it out yet what I'm getting at is moon and the smell of something offered on the altar uh, tomorrow Sunday January 6 I'm recording this on the evening of um, Saturday the 5th and tomorrow January 6 is the new moon which is the dark phase so there's new moon dark phase symbolizing the bride being hidden and we are in the feast of dedication and we are about to if everything on the calendar that he has showed me is correct it's all symbolic and if it comes and goes and like we I have said many times then this was just something else if nothing else we're learning some amazing things from his word if nothing else so take away the good if the day comes and goes that we're looking for then we take away this you know beautiful teaching in his word okay so um tomorrow is a new moon symbolizing the hidden bride and then we're in the feast of dedication we are about to be uh, dedicated to him and when we are dedicated to him which is us going up it will be a sweet smell that he will accept 
<laughs> and this is the Holy Spirit. Holy, we will be holy. Holy means set apart. We will be set apart and holy, accepted as a sweet smell, a sweet savory smell, as an offering to Him, as we are dedicated. And uh, the calendar, let's look at that again. So, um, I mean, who knew? Did anybody else know that that's what Jericho meant? had no idea. I mean, we know it's a city, but the, the, you know, the meaning of the name. Okay, so, um, so this is, I have new moon here because this is the first crescent, which begins the Hebrew month. Now, of course, there's people who believe that the month starts on the full moon, but I don't want to get into that because I've, well, let me just stop right there. Okay, um, this is the actual dark phase tomorrow, Sunday. And we are in the Feast of Dedication. If this is true, Hanukkah. We are in the Feast of Dedication. Um, this ties also to, because it overlays with tabernacles, because Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication is a second Sukkot. And Sukkot is when we, many of us believe, and we believe we are right, that he was born on Tishri 15. And then eight days later, he was dedicated at the temple when he was circumcised. So this is a day of being dedicated, um, assembling at the temple to be dedicated. This means Jericho. <laughs> so you do see all the different ties. Jericho meaning moon and an acceptance of something that's set apart and holy. Tishri 21, tying to the seventh day that they circled Jericho before the walls came down. And there was a shout that had to be given. He said, don't do, and you don't go up until I give the shout, is what he says. And every man went up on this day when they gave the shout. Joshua 6. Um, a dear sister, her and her husband have a wonderful ministry, and their YouTube channel is called Eagle Eye for Christ. And um, also, so I'm going to leave a link to their video. Um, our sister there had a dream about the new moon, and she knew it was time for the wedding and the separation of the sheep and the goats, particularly in the church. Because there are going to be people who are in the church but are not ready to go. They're not part of the bride. Um, not saying that they will end up as a goat, but he's separating those who are ready and those who are not. Um, and then there's another sister who has a wonderful channel also, and her channel is called Watchman144. Watchmen. Um, and I'm going to leave a link to her channel too. And this sister is so wonderful. She, she knows her stuff. And she does, for those of you who like short videos, <laughs> she does short videos and they're very informative and very edifying. And she doesn't have a big following right now. So if we're still here for, y'all yeah, forbid. Oh, Lord, I shouldn't say that. Your will be done, not ours. But, um, if we're here for any, you know, after these next, after this next week, if we're still here, then, and even before then, go because you'll still, we'll get something out of watching her videos. Um, so go and subscribe to her channel because you will enjoy what she puts out and um, she doesn't have as many subscribers as um, some of the, you know, the bigger channels do. So she needs to do, I'm, Promoting her channel is what I'm saying. So, um, and I'm going to leave links to all those. Um, but there's, um, I don't want to say quite a bit, but there's, there's some things I still want to cover. And because I talk a lot, I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm just going to do it in two parts. I promise it won't be three, four, or five, just two parts. So I'm going to cut this one 
off here and then just finish off in the second part because um, there's some more amazing things that in scripture that I want to point out that are pointing directly to this time frame right here. It's like every time, everywhere I go, I get more things keep popping up. So I, I want to show that to you without trying to hurry up and you know, the video is already at 30 minutes. So I will see you guys in part two. Please come back because you're going to be blessed. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Shalom.